Good evening tonight's headlines, legal action pursued against Guyanese critic for compensation in crane operator's death. First Lady Arya Ali donates an ambulance to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Investigations ongoing into a fatal robbery at Aramu Backdam. The government clarifies its position on sand mining activities. An arrest is made in connection with the murder of Nikesha Sutton. Tragically, a fisherman's body is pulled from the water. A fatal mining accident claims the life of Bertram Willie in the upper Mazaruni River. Firearms, ammunition, and narcotics are seized in a police operation at Toroparau Backdam. Additionally, there's a transition at Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry, GBTI, Limited. Stay tuned for updates on these stories. Legal action pursued against Guyanese critic for compensation in crane operator's death. Kaiter News Guyana has learned that legal action is being pursued against Tepui Group Inc., owned by Mikhail Akritik Rodriguez, seeking $80 million in compensation for the death of crane operator Sean Anthony Joseph. Last October, Joseph tragically lost his life after a crane toppled at a wharf under construction in Providence, East Bank Demerara, EBD. Attorney at law Roysdale Ford, representing Kimmervy Shamisha Isa Pellew, the wife of the deceased crane operator, has sent a letter to Tepui Group Inc., outlining their intention to seek legal recourse if a settlement is not reached. In the letter dated March 5, 2024, Ford stated that Joseph died during his course of employment at the company's work site. He emphasized Pellew's willingness to accept compensation in the sum of $80 million and requested a response from Tepui Group Inc. by March 15, 2024. Following Joseph's death, police reported that the crane operator was performing his duties when the crane toppled, pinning him after he attempted to jump to safety. Mikhail Akritik Rodriguez, acting as the public relations consultant for Tepui Group Inc., acknowledged the workplace accident, attributing it to movement at the footing of the pile. He expressed condolences and assured cooperation with the family. However, Rodriguez has faced allegations of collecting $5 million from businessman Nazar Mohammed to settle with the family but failing to do so. In response, critic it denied these claims, asserting that he only provided $460,000 to the family and did not receive $5 million from Mohammed. The situation has garnered attention, with Team Mohammed expressing shock and disbelief over the handling of the matter. The legal proceedings underscore the seriousness of the situation, and Kaiter News Guyana will continue to monitor developments closely. First Lady Arya Ali donates ambulance to Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Today, in a significant gesture of support for pediatric healthcare services, First Lady misses. Arya Ali donated an ambulance to the pediatric ward of the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation GPHC. The donation ceremony was attended by the hospital's chief executive officer, CEO, Mr. Robbie Rambaran, along with other staff members. Mr. Rambaran, upon receiving the keys to the ambulance on behalf of GPHC, expressed heartfelt gratitude, highlighting that it marks the first time the pediatric ward will have its own dedicated ambulance. He emphasized the importance of such donations in enhancing patient care services and expanding the hospital's capacity. Acknowledging Mrs. Ali's ongoing commitment to supporting the hospital and its patients, Mr. Rambarand commended her for her continuous efforts over the past three years. He mentioned previous donations made by Mrs. Ali, including menstrual and sanitary products, as well as hampers for newborns and their mothers, which have greatly benefited the hospital and its community. In her remarks during the handover ceremony, First Lady Arya Ali emphasized the importance of having a dedicated ambulance for the pediatric ward, recognizing the occasional but critical nature of pediatric emergencies. As a mother herself, Mrs. Ali underscored the significance of ensuring prompt and specialized care for pediatric patients. Mrs. Ali also took the opportunity to congratulate CEO Robbie Rambaran and his team for their exemplary leadership and dedication in advancing healthcare services at the premier healthcare institution in Guyana. She reaffirmed her commitment to collaborating with the hospital's management to further expand healthcare services for the Guyanese people.
Investigation ongoing into fatal robbery at Aramu Back Dam. The authorities are continuing investigations into the tragic deaths of 50-year-old businessman Mohammed Zahir Sharif and 26-year-old Donovan Washington, who were fatally shot during a robbery at Aramu Back Dam, Region 7 El Kuyuni Mazaruni, on Sunday. Initial findings suggest that Sheriff, the proprietor of a six-inch land dredge operation at Aramu Back Dam, and Washington, also a father of three, were traveling on an ATV towards Bartica when they were ambushed by two masked individuals on a red all-terrain vehicle, ATV. The assailants opened fire, resulting in the deaths of both victims. The perpetrators made off with 102 ounces of raw gold valued at $37 million, as well as two licensed firearms belonging to Sheriff. Subsequent investigations have led to the arrest of some of Sheriff's employees, who are currently undergoing questioning. A team from the Major Crimes Unit of the Criminal Investigation Department CID, has been dispatched to Bartica to lead the investigation. Autopsies conducted by government pathologist Dr. Nihal Singh revealed that both victims died from multiple gunshot wounds. The bodies have since been released to their families. Mohammed Zahir Sheriff was laid to rest on Wednesday, while Donovan Washington's funeral is scheduled for Sunday in Bartica. The Guyana Gold and Diamond Miners Association GGDMA, expressed profound sadness over the incident, urging miners to bolster security measures and calling on the authorities to conduct a thorough investigation. As the investigation progresses, anyone with relevant information is encouraged to come forward and assist the authorities in bringing the perpetrators to justice. Government clarifies position on sand mining activities. In response to recent reports regarding potential sand mining activities by Commissioner of Police AG Clifton Hicken and Deputy Commissioner AG Calvin Brutus on the Sosdike slash Linden Highway, Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio reiterated the government's stance on private sand pit developments in the area. During a People's Progressive Party Civic PPP slash C press conference on Thursday, Vice President Jagdio emphasized that the government is not authorizing any new private sand pit developments on the Sosdike slash Linden Highway. He underscored that while there is a rising demand for sand due to ongoing construction projects, the government's priority remains regulating prices and ensuring equitable access to building materials. Vice President Jagdio highlighted the government's initiative to open public sand pits last year, which has helped to lower the price of sand by increasing supply. He reiterated the government's commitment to exploring additional public sand pits to further regulate prices and mitigate shortages in building materials. Regarding reports of potential applications by senior police officials for private sand mining, Vice President Jagdio clarified that no such approvals will be granted. He emphasized that the government's position is unequivocal in prohibiting private developers from opening new mining areas on the Sosdike slash Linden Highway. Minister of Public Works Juan Edge Hill previously acknowledged the rising demand for sand and stone and mentioned government efforts to engage foreign suppliers to meet this demand. However, Vice President Jagdio emphasized that while addressing shortages in building materials is crucial, it will not come at the expense of allowing private sand mining ventures in prohibited areas. As the government continues to roll out its housing agenda and infrastructural projects, Vice President Jagdio emphasized the importance of ensuring a steady supply of building materials to avoid work delays. He reassured the public that the government remains committed to addressing challenges in the construction sector while upholding environmental regulations and sustainability principles. Arrest made in connection with the murder of Nike Shah Sutton the Guyana Police Force GPF, has made a significant breakthrough in the investigation into the tragic death of 24-year-old Nike Shah Sutton. Following days of intensive search and investigation, the main suspect, Melroy LaRose, has been apprehended. Mr. LaRose was arrested on Wednesday evening in Taimari, thanks to the diligent efforts of law enforcement authorities. Upon his arrest, he was promptly handed over to investigators in Division 3 for further questioning and processing. The incident, which occurred at the Porica Back Dam, East Bank Essequibo, EB, home of the victim, involved a fatal altercation between Mr. LaRose and Ms. Sutton. According to initial reports, Mr. LaRose arrived home under the influence of alcohol, leading to a heated argument with his wife. 
Tragically, the situation escalated, resulting in Ms. Sutton sustaining fatal injuries. Despite efforts to intervene, Ms. Sutton succumbed to her wounds upon arrival at the Leonora Cottage Hospital. The swift action by law enforcement has led to the apprehension of the suspect, and he is expected to face charges imminently. The GPF remains committed to ensuring justice for the victim and her family and will continue to diligently pursue this case until all responsible parties are brought to justice. We extend our deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of Nike Shaw Sutton during this difficult time. The GPF urges anyone with relevant information regarding this case to come forward and assist with the ongoing investigation. Fisherman's body pulled from water. Police in Essequibo are currently investigating the suspected drowning of 23-year-old Mahindra Prasad, called Bandit, a fisherman of 259, Devonshire Castle Backstreet, Essequibo Coast, which occurred between Wednesday, March 6, 2024, about 20 hundred hours hours and Thursday, March 7, 2024, about 6 o'clock hours at Jib Sea Wall, Essequibo Coast. According to Marvin Prasad, Mahindra's brother, Hia Mahindra, would go out to sea, spend about three or three a days, and return home. He told police that the now dead man is an alcoholic and has been suffering from seizures for about five, five years now. Marvin Prasad further stated that his brother was last seen alive on Tuesday, March 5, 2024, at about seven o'clock hours when he left home for sea with Peshwarlal Chattergoon, a boat captain. Chattergoon claimed that on March 5, 2024, about 11 a.m. M., Mahindra and Johnny Toro, another fisherman, left and went to sea to catch fish when the boat experienced mechanical issues. As such, the boat was towed by another boat, which is owned by Chattergoon. Chattergoon further stated that on March 6, 2024, at about 19.30 a.m. M., Mahindra and Johnny moored the said boat at Jib Seawall Essequibo Coast, about 300, 300 feet out in the sea. He left the now dead man and Johnny with both of the boats and went home. According to Toro, he was on the boat, which was broken down, while Mahindra was on the other boat. At about 20 colon 00 HR on the said night, he didn't see Mahindra. So he decided to moor the boat that he was on, and he went home. On Thursday, March 7, 2024, at about 6.30 hours, the body of Mahindra Prasad was seen floating about 100 feet out at sea by passers-by. The body was clad in a black vest and grey underpants. It was fished out of the water by public-spirited citizens. Below the deceased left eye, a wound was seen, which is suspected to be caused by fish. The body is presently at the Sutty Public Hospital, mortuary, awaiting post-mortem examination. Fatal Mining Accident Claims Life of Bertram Willey in Upper Mazaruni River It is with deep regret that we announce the passing of Bertram Willey, a 60-year-old miner, who tragically lost his life during a mining accident at Cowingback Dam, Upper Mazaruni River in Region No. 7. According to initial investigations, Willey, the registered owner of a 4-inch water dredge operation at the location, was submerged in the Mazaruni River extracting gravel when a piece of land caved into the river. Trevor Ben, another miner present at the scene, reported observing the incident and immediately calling out to Willie, but unfortunately received no response. Ben promptly raised an alarm and, with the help of nearby miners, initiated a search for Willie in the river. Regrettably, Willie was found pinned down underwater by a tree stump. Despite efforts to rescue him, Willie's body was motionless when retrieved from the river. The body of Bertram Willey has been transported to the Imbimidae Health Post under police guard, where it awaits a post-mortem examination. The mining community mourns the loss of Bertram Willey and extends heartfelt condolences to his family, friends, and colleagues during this difficult time. Firearms, ammunition, and narcotics seized in police operation at Toroporo Back Dam. In a proactive effort to combat illegal activities, police ranks in Regional Division 7 conducted a targeted operation at Toroporo Back Dam, Lower Peruni River. The operation, which was based on actionable intelligence, aimed to address concerns related to illicit mining and associated criminal activities in the area. 
During the operation, police ranks, utilizing an all-terrain vehicle ATV, observed a makeshift mining camp along the trail. Upon approaching the camp, a male individual was seen fleeing the scene. Despite efforts to apprehend the suspect, he managed to evade capture. A thorough search of the camp was conducted by the police ranks, leading to the discovery of significant items. Within a hammock tied under the camp, law enforcement discovered a Taurus pistol along with one magazine containing 7.9mm live rounds. Additionally, a bulky plastic bag was found, containing 147 small transparent Ziploc plastic bags filled with a substance suspected to be cannabis. In accordance with standard procedures, the firearm, ammunition, and narcotics were confiscated by the police ranks. An ongoing investigation has been launched to determine the identity of the individual who fled the camp and to further probe into the illegal activities detected during the operation. The Guyana police force remains steadfast in its commitment to combating crime and ensuring the safety and security of all citizens. Operations such as these demonstrate the proactive measures taken by law enforcement to address emerging threats and disrupt criminal networks operating within our communities. The public is urged to continue providing information and cooperating with law enforcement authorities to combat illegal activities effectively. Together, we can work towards creating safer and more secure environments for all. Transition at Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry, GBTI, Ltd. The Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry, GBTI, Ltd. has announced a leadership transition, with current Chief Executive Officer, CEO, James Foster set to step down and be succeeded by his deputy, Sean Gercharan. James Foster's tenure as CEO will conclude on March 31, 2024, and Sean Gercharan will assume the role of CEO starting April 2, 2024. In a statement, GBTI expressed its profound gratitude to James Foster for his transformative leadership since 2020. Foster's global banking expertise and strategic vision have played a pivotal role in advancing GBTI's position in the banking sector, leading to significant achievements and setting new benchmarks for excellence. Sean Gercharan, the incoming CEO, brings over 20 years of banking experience to the role, having served as GBTI's Chief Financial Officer and Deputy Chief Executive Officer. Gercharan's profile includes an MBA with a specialism in finance, as well as ACCA and CGI fellowships, which have contributed significantly to GBTI's financial growth and strategic transformation efforts. GBTI expressed confidence in Gercharan's leadership, highlighting his solid tenure and extensive experience as key assets for leading the bank's management structure. Gercharan will be supported by an executive team with a wealth of experience, ensuring a continued trajectory of growth, innovation, and commitment to excellence. The appointment of Sean Gercharan as CEO continues the legacy of strong Guyanese leadership at both the helm and management levels of GBTI.